All right, this is problem uh, number two, free response from the unit two pre-exam. And what we have is a block sitting on a table, but it's at an angle that is going to slide down. This part here has friction, use of K, and this part here, that little part there, they said has no friction. And what they want to know first is derive the equation for the velocity in terms of L, the angle, and the use of K. Well, let's look at what, the ang what that velocity would come from. We would use velocity squared is equal to the original velocity plus two times the acceleration in x. Well, the x distance is really L, so we're going to substitute that in. And it starts from rest because it was, it started at rest. So we can be able to get rid of that value and we're going to end up with velocity squared equals 2 times a l because I substitute that, that in. We now have two unknowns and since this is what I'm solving for I need to find acceleration. Well, like any problem that we're worried about, let's do the free body diagram. And we have force of friction opposing my motion down. We will have the normal force. And then we will have mass times gravity here. Also, we could have called it F of W. And this is all on our table like that. We are going to have to get everything on the x and y axis so I know I'm going to break up my mass and gravity into let's say we have our x and y axis and we've done this a ton of times by now so I'm going to have the portion of the mass times gravity in the cosine that way. And then I'm going to have the portion of my mass times gravity in the sine because that's all opposite of my angle. So I'm going to have that broken down. So let's sum up my forces. Some of my forces I have now are, and I really just care about acceleration. So I am going to just worry about everything that's happening along this axis. And let's call that one X and this one Y. So I'm only worried about what's in the X axis. So if I check them off as I go, and I'm going to have this direction is positive. So I'm going to have the sine of it. And then I'm going to have opposing my motion as use of K, F of K, I'm sorry. And that is equal to the mass of the object and acceleration. I still don't know use of K, but we can get that from our Y direction. And we're going to use F of N. It's going to be positive. It's going up. Minus the portion of the mass in that direction. And we have no movement there, so we can get rid of that. Fn is equal to that, which helps us because we know F of K really is 
f of k m f fn so we're going to keep breaking that down and we're going to bring that in over here so our equation now looks rather large along And remember, what we're looking for is acceleration. And if we rewrite that quick, we can get rid of masses. Notice masses in all of them, so I can get rid of it. And this breaks down if I do the algebra. into that. So remember all the way up above we had velocity squared is equal to 2 times a l. Let's bring that in and velocity squared now equals 2 l g the sine of u sub k the cosine of that. And, and I could rewrite that real quick uh, taking the square root of it or just leave it like that and we're good to go. The next thing on B it asks if the inclined plane is pushed farther back so what they're saying is if I move this back this way a little bit I take this whole thing and basically I'm extending this table to be longer but remember this is frictionless and it's doubled so it's gonna double along there so what's it traveling on the table how will this change the maximum horizontal velocity range as it goes across the floor so they want to know they're looking to see Basically, when this block comes down and it comes across here like this, giving it more time along this frictionless surface, will it land farther away on the floor? And, and it's going to stay the same because it carries that speed all the way across the table. It's frictionless. So really, it comes down to this: the simple way of saying it is that the vertical the velocity here isn't going to change at all along because it travels along here that horizontal isn't going to change so it's going to land just as far because it's not losing anything to friction or anything like this so it's going to keep going that same distance and I explain it more in detail on B and I'll let you look at that and read it in more detail if you want to so let's move to C. In C, they're trying to model the range, the magnitude of range R. So that's what the distance is that we're going on that floor. And in this case, we've got a couple of, we've got our horizontal velocity and from that we can figure out this will tell us how long is the block in the air and the vertical we're going to use from our kinematic equations and this will be this will tell me how long how long does it take to fall a change in y so I need to know this one first so if I rewrite this equation 
I need to basically know how long is it in the air. That's what we're doing. And we had a problem like that before where the guy was jumping across um, from one building to another, a stuntman. And we need to figure out how long is he, or the block in this case, is it actually in the air? And the amount of time that it's in the air is right there. So I can go back to the information I know about the X direction and bring this in and it becomes and I used I'd used I changed change in Y because remember that is the distance Here's my change in Y. This is R. So my change in Y, I rewrote that as H. And so I put that in. And then R is really, X is really R because that's what this distance is. And that makes the second that equation is much more believable. The last one, D, is on that one they say, hey, they're gonna make this part rough by putting sandpaper on it. And this is our table again. And they want to know will it affect fact how long it takes to fall well the only thing that really affects how long it takes to fall is is gravity and the acceleration and the height of the object the sandpaper here makes no difference remember this x direction is independent of the y direction and i explain in a little more detail in d um, but it's going to take the same amount of time to fall because X and Y axis are completely independent of each other.